All right, good evening. We'll go ahead and get started. I appreciate uh, us being a little bit late tonight, being patient with us. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with roll call. Uh, Renee, please show all board members present tonight. And if you'll join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, we'll go ahead and move to approve the agenda for tonight. Are there any changes? All right. Need a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Second. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. All right, uh, Dr. Mellon, public comments on agenda items? We, I guess we have none tonight. Okay. All right, our next uh, topic is uh, board planning, goals, and strategies, and I believe we have a uh, presentation on college and career readiness. Board, before I do that, if you don't mind, uh, last board meeting, uh, you were asked by us to approve uh, the Maple Principal, and at that time, that individual was on a well-deserved family vacation. And so if you don't mind, I would like to take just a second to uh, introduce the new principal at Maple Elementary, Amber Cook. Amber Cook, if you would please stand. Hi. Amber um, is one of our finest teachers in our school corporation, so it's with sort of mixed thoughts and feelings because uh, she's an outstanding teacher that gets great results out of her students. However, uh, she's really prepared herself for this move to become a principal of a building where she can take that talent and that she's uh, developed over the years um, to a, a wider audience. And so I think that her impact and influence on Maple Elementary will be a great asset. And so we're very honored to have her as the uh, new principal at Maple Elementary. So again, board, thank you for letting me introduce her to you tonight. I'm just gonna echo that we're sad to see you leave New Washington. Before she taught my daughter. <laughs> but congratulations. Board, in terms of college and career readiness, uh, just again, we try to keep you up to date and uh, provided a presentation for you. Just take a few minutes. There's so much going on for us. Uh, our, uh, this is a presentation that we've uh, in part given to several audiences lately, but that college and career advisory continues to be a tremendous asset made up of over 60 business leaders, workforce, uh, post-secondary partners, as well as our K-12 group. It's uh, very influential. It's been very supportive. Uh, the business community is very hungry uh, as we try to move things forward with college and career readiness. And so we're very happy about that. The four pathways were based upon market research. Uh, this year, all of our students had to, last school year, all of our students had to select a pathway. Well, this school year, all of our teachers will be put into a pathway. And then also by the end of this year, we want to recruit those business partners, have at least five to 10 uh, business partners in each pathway for each school. So if you think about that for a minute, you know, you have four pathways per school and you have three high schools basically and three middle schools. And you, so it's a large number of business partners, but that's our goal is to recruit enough. So in each pathway, for example, health at, uh, New Washington, the health pathway, we want at least five health professionals that are going to be as part of an advisory that will work directly with the teachers who have been placed in that advisory to talk about how do they connect their academic content to real life. So the conversation starts to come back and forth. So the teachers can then go back in the classroom and say, well, we've been talking to doctors, nurses, radiologists, etc. And when I'm teaching this concept, I can make a connection for those students in my room who may have an interest in the health pathway. So everyone, everybody's connected uh, to try to increase the relevancy for our kids. So that's the goal this year. I hope to provide a listing by every school, every pathway, five to ten uh, partners from our community, professional partners, uh, by the end of the school year. Uh, the mandatory careers class uh, continues for 6th and ninth graders and that's really where we set the stage for our students to really get a feel for what is it that I might be good at and interested in. And, and it's more broad than just taking a career interest inventory. 
You know, you really have to get into what a student is thinking and how they're feeling and where they're passionate and motivated. Um, and so they're, that class is a process that by the end of the class, they should have a good sense, at least right then, of what do they want to do, knowing that next week, next month, next year it could change. But at least we've taught them a process for how to make those types of choices. The project learning, uh, project uh, lead the way rather, has been tremendously successful. We have kids signing up. The, the enrollments are increasing. In fact, it's become a challenge for us from a staffing perspective because we need to train more staff. Um, it's really project-based learning. You know, kids, you go into a biomedical classroom and those students are in lab coats with goggles and they're, they are simulating a, uh, a death scene. There's been a death and there, there's a, a chalk line of a body in their classroom and they have to investigate when did the person die and, and by what cause and they have to do an analysis and use their computers and I am telling you it is exciting and it's starting at the seventh grade level with medical detectives a mandatory class for seventh graders so it's like a CSI for seventh graders uh, very popular and all of our eighth graders take gateway to technology and the reason why we do that is we want males and females introduced to both of those pathways. Uh, traditionally, um, and that's, it's changed a lot lately, but traditionally the engineering technology route was a little bit more male dominated. Well, that's not necessarily the case anymore, but this is one way to sort of set the stage there, that we want both pathways to be introduced to all parties, and it's been uh, very successful. Advanced placement classes, we lead the area in offerings. There's no high school in our area that comes close to the number of offerings for advanced placement. Um, we'll have some numbers up here for you relatively soon in terms of uh, our percent of passage and all that from last school year, uh, but I project that it'll be, uh, you'll be impressed by that. Dual credit classes, 35% of our students last school year were involved in past a dual credit class one-third of our high school students. That's pretty impressive. And again, for parents, at no cost to them. Uh, we have students that graduated with 12, 15 college credits this past school year. In early college at Jeff High and Charleston High will start this school year. Students enrolling will graduate with not only their high school diploma, but with an associate's degree. 60 college credits that they did not have to pay for. So our new Washington students, you know, I, I wish that we could provide the same level for our new Washington students, but early college is so comprehensive in terms of the course offerings, we don't have those, enough of those courses. But we'll offer that opportunity to new Washington students if they would like to take advantage of that opportunity. So at least it's a start in the right direction. But wouldn't it be nice in a few years that a student walks across the stage and wouldn't it be great to have some kind of screen up above them and, and it would show the name of the student, it would show where they've been accepted, which is our goal, 100% acceptance to a post-secondary opportunity, and it would also show um, you know, an associate's degree earned. That'd be pretty impressive. So we're, at least we're on the way and we're pretty pleased. Uh, there's a lot more I could talk about with this, but I just wanted to give you an update. I don't know if you had any questions about college and career readiness. I just think it's incredible that we have that many members on the CCR advisory committee and, and looking at the list of people, I know that they're uh, connected to our businesses in this community and I applaud you for getting those people to the table and I've spoken with a few of them and, and they, feel, um, they feel very good about our school district and where we're headed. Great. I'd like to thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, one last thing I'd mention too is that work ethic certification. Um, we are ready to introduce a work ethic certificate program for our seniors this year and um, we have some work to do to clean it up a little bit but our goal would be to, to talk to all of our seniors here in August, talk to them about what the work ethic certificate would entail. There's a criteria that we've already laid out, 98% attendance, 2.0 grade point average, 0 or 1 um, behavioral referrals, um, reading at grade level or above based upon standardized testing and, and also performing math at grade level or above, 
So it's not going to be just a piece of paper that we hand to kids. It's going to be earned. But the goal would be for our seniors at all three high schools to, to be able to earn that certificate next school year. Or pardon me, this school year. I guess we are almost into that <laughs> phase. Week away, right? Mr. Mr. You, one thing we briefly discussed is with New Washington is maybe somehow or another synchronizing school time so that if a child in New Washington wants to take physics, we could video conference the classes in. Uh, we have the technology, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some issues to work out, but you can just put that on your many things in your agenda, mm -hmm. <laughs> on your plate to do. I will. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Mellon, I think we can see you're pretty passionate about this, so um, <laughs> we appreciate your passion, by the way. You're welcome. All right, our next item is uh, policy review NEOLA organizational strategy. I think Ms. Lewis is going to take us through that. Maybe for the last time for a thank while, you. right? <laughs> yeah, thank you and good evening. We're um, wanting to update you on the NEOLA process. It's a jungle and a zoo kind of combined, but we're we're getting there and we have a plan. So first thing, just so that you know, we're, we have received all of the policy materials from the NEOLA organization and uh, we've worked to get them all organized. They're all in uh, folders and they're ready to go forward with the different series that we'll be reviewing. We're going to start with the premise that the NEOLA policies are what we're going to adopt. We decided that was the easiest. I mean, the NEOLA policies have been promoted and adopted by um, school corporations throughout the state of Indiana. They're supposed to be current on state and federal law. Uh, we have been provided with documentation from the Indiana School Boards Association on what required policies we must have for state and federal law. We will compare and contrast those between what NEOLA has, but it's our understanding they're supposed to be pretty much one and the same as far as policies. So um, we, we will go through that process when we're reviewing them. But, then, but what we'll do as far as the actual review of the documents is we're setting up uh, a series of committees and we have chairpersons. We're going to call them review teams and we have chairpersons that are going to serve and we're going to try to limit the number of persons that are on those review teams to like 10 and we'll have to, up to three board members can serve on the different committees. Uh, currently I've had volunteers from Ms. Gilkey, Ms. Buttoff Perkins, and Mr. Hall have volunteered to serve on the different committees. I know Ms. Kraft said if there was something transportation related she would be interested in, you know, serving. And um, so, and then we've got the GCEA that have some team members that they want to include, and then we have cabinet level members that we will be incorporating into the different <coughs> committees. So just to give you an idea of, of where we're going with this, we're going to do a review meeting in August. Um, we're going to do this after the start of the school year because we're kind of busy these next couple of weeks. But we're going to look at the series one, series 0,000, and that's the bylaws, and the 1,000, that's the administration. And I'm going to serve as the chair on that um, team. And then, like I said, we'll have members of the board, members of the GCCS team, and then the GCEA. And those two committees, just so that you have an awareness, these are, these are probably the two biggest committees that the board itself would be interested in because this is the one that talks about the identification of the uh, school corporation, our name, our boundaries, our seal, our philosophy of the board, the powers of the board. If you'll remember the 9,000 series that we have in our current policy manual, the 8,000 and 9,000, we did a lot of work on those. So really it'll be just kind of comparing and contrasting what we have in place with what they're recommending by NEOLA. I don't think it'll be a huge task. I think, you know, it's the conflict of interest, qualifications, the oath, orientation, election, elections, et cetera. And then on the administration component, it's the organizational charts, um, the goals, the board superintendent relationships, responsibilities of the superintendent. Uh, employment of the treasurer, evaluation of the treasurer, job descriptions, you know, whistleblower act, different things like that, leaves of absence, sick leave, physical examinations. So, you know, those will be things that we'll move through uh, in the month of August. 
there will be three meetings scheduled in September to review two sections per meeting. The first meeting will be for the series 2000, which is program, 5000, which is students. The chairpersons will be Kim Hartledge, Amy Schellenberg, and Ann Schneff. And um, those relate to as far as program, um, parent family involvement, me meeting state performance indicators, school improvement, Title I services, Title I parent participation, uh, innovative programs, non-discrimination field trips, educational options. You know, we have all those policies. We're just going to look to see how they line up with our NEOLA policies. Also in the 5000 series, as far as students, eligibility of non-resident and resident students, homeless students, educational opportunity for military children, assignments within the district, withdrawal from schools, uh, late arrivals, early dismissals, health services, immunizations, use of meds, you know, again, we have these policies in place. We'll be comparing those to the NEOLA policy with the, with the concept that NEOLA is going to control. So that's what, that'll be one meeting that'll be scheduled, and Pam Maples will handle scheduling the date, time, and location for these meetings. We'll try to schedule them as late in the afternoon as possible so that our reps from our GCEA can be present. We usually try to schedule those meetings about 4 o'clock in the afternoon so that we can have their participation and input. The next meeting that will be in September will be the 3000 series professional staff and classified staff. Donna Mullins will serve as the chairperson there. And basically that's very similar to what we have in our um, certified and classified um, groups at this time. Let me give you a couple of hints on you know, creating a position, board staff communications, employment of subs, volunteers, criminal history background checks, employment contracts, assignments and transfers, suspensions, and then um, again for the classified staff, uh, employment of subs, volunteers, criminal history, drug-free workplace. I mean all of those things that we currently have but they're just not in the same number, numbering system. And then the last one will be uh, two sections, series 6000 which is finance and 7000 which is property and the chairperson on that will be Dr. Deichel. So that's what we're looking at it in September to um, get underway. And then in October, we're looking at the first meeting being for the Series 8000 operations, and that will be Travis and Donna Mullins that will handle that series. And that's basically uh, mandatory license and reporting requirements school calendar, public records, school day. Oh, and Aaron Borges will be on that committee also. Personnel files, uh, student records, letters of references, confidentiality, environment, health and safety, safety crisis in intervention, emergency situations at schools. And then the next meeting in October will be for the Series 9000, and that's relations. And that's uh, chaired by Travis and Aaron Borges, and that would be public information programs, public complaints, citizen advisory committees, business advisory councils, school visitors, you know, those types of policies that we would be working on. So in August, September, and October, we should be able to make it through a review of all of the series that are recommended for adoption by the NEOLA organization. Then in November, all the series would be given a final review by their teams, and then in, de in December, the board would be asked to rescind all the current Greater Clark policies and to adopt all of the NEOLA policies as presented with a goal to implement the new policies by January 15th. Now, that's a whole lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> but Good job. we're trying to get this thing underway, and if we don't just take a big bite out of it and get started, we'll never get there, and we'll keep pushing it out because we all have so many things on our plate. But that's what the goal is sent emails to all of the people asking to be chairpersons and have not had anyone try to throttle me yet, although they might. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's what our plan is. We're excited. And, I, and the NEOLA has provided us with, us with 10 copies of all the policies and everything to review. That's why we're going to try to limit the meeting component to not more than 10 persons because it would be a costly duplication effort to have to try to produce more than what um, we've been provided and also tends a large number when you get into looking at wording 
And also, we're not going to fight about wording. If the intent and meaning is the same, the NEOLA policy will control. So that's where we are. Questions? Sandy, can, uh, will the, can the board get a physical copy of this time schedule, agenda, I the plan? Certainly. I'll give it to Dr. Mellon. He can put it in your Friday update. Be happy to. Also, Sandy, I know some of us have, you know, volunteered to be on committees, um, but if you would please have um, Pam reach out to all board members Certainly. for each of the committees because, I mean, ultimately the job has two responsibilities, one to hire and evaluate the superintendent and two to set policy. So I just want to make sure that we all get opportunities to sit on each committee because that's really our job. Happy to do that. Thank you. And then we'll, we'll send the notification out to all of you, and then you all can decide through your board president who will be attending what meeting. How's that sound? Okay, you can just let Pam know. Important work. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. I appreciate it. All right. Our next uh, is the budget report, the fund monitoring report. So I guess that's going to be Dr. Deichel. I got my handy dandy <laughs> laser pointer here. Laser pointer. Um, we're doing very good so far in the general fund. Um, I'll just direct you down to the bottom number here. We're looking at uh, three million one oh nine as our ending cash balance at the end of December of this year, which is great. <coughs> so debt, you know, let's go back to debt service now. This is the time of year where I get to talk to you about debt service because we made a payment in June. So right now we're looking at a negative $1,445,000 in debt service, mainly because we're taking the cash uh, tax caps out of debt service now. So we weren't doing that prior to this year, so now we're spreading our debt, that $3.1 million, that tax cap that we're going to lose among the five funds. So that helps <coughs> the other funds. Okay, Pension debt, we're sitting with a negative 173 at the end of the year, and that's fine with me. Uh, we'll go ahead and move the money around to cover that, but again, it's because we're spreading that tax cap over all the funds instead of just capital projects, transportation, operating, and bus replacement. <coughs> if you look at capital projects now, uh, we're looking at about a $1.3 million cash balance at the end of the year, so we'll have money available for some other projects that Dr. Mellon and Mr. Hobgood have in mind that they haven't told me about yet. So then we'll have to come to the board and let you know what we're going to be doing. So we're looking good in capital projects. Transportation operating, um, we're about 275 in the red based on the end of the year projection and talking with transportation this morning. They think uh, we'll be closer to zero. They're going to cut off a lot of the expenditures. According to Brian, the uh, transportation head mechanic, he said that we're spending a lot of money right now because of the bus inspections. So once that goes away, I mean, it's not $275,000 worth, but don't forget, we've also uh, eliminated six bus routes that the corporation was paying, so we should see some of those numbers come down, fuel, things of that nature, and then we'll see an increase on the uh, bus replacement fund where we're paying for the contracted drivers. So we're at 274, but that should come down by the end of the year. And then the bus replacement fund, we're at a $204,000 cash balance. Um, what I'd like to do is when we get closer to the end of the year to see exactly where that's at. I need to buy some uh, mini buses. Our mini bus fleet is in dire need of <laughs> replacement. Yeah. Uh, they're going to start looking like Flintstone pretty soon here if we don't replace them. We already them. do. Pardon me? We already do look like them. Yeah, I know. The, there's a lot of rust on them, the doors and, and things like that. So. I think we're just going to go with a white fleet and then we can transfer them to school to school and it's not going to be a blue bus or a red bus or anything like that. So we'll look at that. And then the rainy day fund, um, we're sitting with $3,709,000. So overall we're looking, we're looking pretty good. Those couple funds that were in the negative, I'm not worried about those as of right now. We should be okay by the end of the year. And according to the State Board of Accounts, we can't be in a negative at the end of the year, so we'll transfer money out of the general fund to cover it, and then we'll transfer it back after January. So we'll play our little accounting game. We're in the shell game. 
Mm -hmm. All right, any questions for Dr. Dykel on the fund monitoring report? All right, next one is the recycling report. Okay, this is a good one i like to show you. We just started recycling at the beginning of uh, this past school year, and we have now recycled or, or made sure 354,000 pounds of garbage did not go into the recycling, or I mean into the uh, landfill, went into the recycling bins. I think that's, that's great for our school corporation. 177 tons we diverted from landfills to the recycling. If the board would allow me to do this on an annual report now, we gave it to you every quarter. I'd like to just do it an annual report, so this time next year we'll do an annual report. Maybe I can give you 2013-14 school year, 14-15 school year, and see how much we can get up to. So, anyway, that's just for your information. All right. Okay. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Are we using a private company? <coughs> We're using Ecotech. Okay. which is our normal company that uses that uh, picks up our garbage okay. and uh, when we bid it out we asked for um, the recycling and the garbage okay. one company I think just did recycling another uh, Ecotech did both and then it was I think a third company that did uh, gave us a price on both basically we're still going to spend about thirty five thousand dollars a year on garbage or recycling it didn't really cost us any it didn't save us any money it's just being good stewards, I think, of not filling up the landfills. Mm -hmm. I, I'm asking because the county is no longer going to pick up out in the county, so if we have a private, it won't matter. Yeah, okay. we have echo. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, next is the ener energy report. Mr. Lockhart. Energy. Uh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> You won't have to yell much longer at me. <laughs> Only eight days left. You move, you move so fast, I thought you'd herniate a disc almost. <laughs> I've not seen you move that fast a long time. Hey, now. <laughs> First of all, good evening, everybody. <laughs> we'll get off that topic. First of all, I need to welcome, uh, we have a guest here, uh, John Lampus. He's vice president, also an energy consultant for energy education, which is now called Synergistic. So... He'll be making an award a little bit later on, but glad to have him. And then also right to my right, your new energy manager, Todd Gibbons, uh, through a process of interviewing so and so forth. We brought Todd on, and he's been with me for about a month and a half now, learning the ropes, hopefully, and doing a great job. The one part that, where are you going? Come over here. <laughs> anyway, what I'd like to say about him, a couple things. One, I, we always like to hear something that Dr. Bell was talking about. We like our homegrown people. And he is Greater Clark all the way. He started at Riverside to Parkview to Jeff High. Then he pursued his education at the University of Louisville. And he's a mechanical engineer by trade and with a lot of good background previous to coming here. So doing a fantastic job. I'm looking for great uh, things out of him. So glad to have you on time. Uh, then the other thing, usually we don't drag our wives in, but tonight I brought my wife with me. She wouldn't sit still. She said, I want to come. So behind every good man, there's a good woman. So Carol's here for you. Uh, <laughs> I cannot believe it, but I think we've been into our program for about nine years plus now. It's gone by very quickly, 110 months of uh, energy program. I, sometimes I used to fight for ever last little, you know, ten thousand, hundred thousand dollar increase. I always got excited. Always got excited about the percentage of cost avoidance. Here we are today at six point three million dollars saved with uh, twenty six percent cost avoidance. So I'm, you know, that just tickles me to death to get to go out on that. Uh, this is something we all can relate to just a little bit more as far as uh, usage savings. If we could do probably all these at our home with this kind of percentage of savings, we would just be elated. Uh, I'm thrilled to death that we can end up on this. This is over the nine-year period. You'll notice it's usage versus cost. Sometimes I like to look at the usage because that's just as important as anything. And as you can see, I won't have to read it all to you, but, you know, 27% electricity usage, which is 44 million kilowatts, which is a whole lot of, that's over, I think, out of the $6 million saved, I think $3 million of it is electricity. Uh, of course, that's our largest resource. Uh, natural gas, 21%, then water, sewage, and then propane. One, we just have one school, or two schools with propane, that's New Washington. We're going to one day maybe get a little gas line up there, we hope so, because it always seems to be a hassle, and 
that's one of those things that jump around price wise so we're working at that right now to try to get the best cost we can for that just a quick little cost analysis I'm not going to go through and read every little bit to you but if we wouldn't have done what we've been doing as you can see up there it been 23 million instead we just actually had 17 million and showed you in the pie chart that that's a saving you know basically a, about a quarter of our savings so that's really nice there um, this is one thing I mentioned I think last year and I think everybody mm -hmm. about was here but anyway over the nine years some of this money here that we're talking about this is incentive money and equipment upgrades with our energy program we've been part of a power share credit with Duke Energy over the years and basically what that is is the days that are super hot like this they ask us to reduce our load. Well, as you know, we can't do it during you know school time, but any time in the summer that we can do that, we do that. But the good thing is they do pay us a stipend. So over that seven-year period, we've been part of that. We've made they just basically money they give to us, and that's seventy-four thousand dollars. Then on the incentive rebates, that is things I've talked about before, whether it be lighting, motors, chillers. When you buy new things like that, they give you a rebate of sorts, and I've been keeping up with that over the years, and that's a $232,000 chunk of money. So that comes straight back to us. So I get really excited about our incentive program. Um, finally, uh, this environmental impact, kind of like what Dr. Dyke was saying, that you know, anytime we can show the public what we're doing and what we're saving, and you know, just look through there, you can see the the impact we have on the environment. So really pleased with uh, that. And then finally, uh, one other thing I had to say at the end. Oh, I couldn't go any further without this. As I've been through here my nine years, I don't have to tell any of you folks besides the number of school board people we've been through. Of course, we've been through four <laughs> superintendents and four CFOs. And that makes it a little more difficult on a guy in my position because you never know who the next guy's coming in, whether they want to back you or not. And uh, as far as Dr. Millen, he has been super. Every time he's in front of somebody, he's always singing my praises. I thank you for that very much. And then Steve, wherever Steve is, where are you, Steve? Right Down there. Where? He's been with me the whole nine years. He's been uh, a great guidance to me and helped me out in many, many ways, things that I had no knowledge of when I came in, and I've learned a whole heck of a lot in my nine years. So thank you to Steve. And then the other people in our department, you know, Mike, he's the one who's kind of spearheaded our, uh, our recycling, and, you know, Mike has to take care, I don't know if you know that, but he takes care of 82 custodians on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Now you think that that's the hardest job in my opinion besides the Dr. Mellon. But anyway, I like to thank Mike and then Debbie Price, of course, our secretary. And then we couldn't do all that without the teachers and mechanics and all the other people. So thank you for everything y'all have done. I've had a great run and I'll be getting out of here eight days and I <laughs> never know. I might be back, but I hope. <laughs> do I have any questions for you guys? I just got one comment. I appreciate your emails because every time we got an email from you, it was a savings. You know, we get emails from everybody in the district, and sometimes you don't want to open them. Sometimes you do. But anytime we got one from you, I'd look at, I'd pop it open because you're always telling us what we were doing and what we were saving, and you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sometimes I took a little too much personal to my own heart, trying wow. to save a little more than I should. And <laughs> along the way, I might have upset a few people. You probably have heard that before. Tony probably being one of them. They got over it. They got over it. Anyway, thank y'all very much. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you, John. Do you want to come up now? He's going to make the presentation yeah. now soon. Yeah. Good evening. Um, as um, I was introduced, my name is John Lampus. I'm with uh, Synergistic, and for you that were around nine years ago, we were called Energy Ed at that time. Um, normally, uh, I'm here to get, present an award. I'll, I'll spit that out right now. Uh, normally these awards are presented by our marketing arm of our company. I'm a field consultant, just uh, was an energy manager just like uh, Gus was. And, uh, so, and, and I've been in the Greater Clark several times with Gus and Watt Buildings back in the old days when we were both brand new. And so uh, it's a pleasure for me to pinch hit for the marketing people and, and be able to present an award. We have uh, in Synergistic I think four different types of awards, and the one that we're going to present tonight to Greater Clark County Schools is the, the Chairman's Sustainability Award. And to me, this is the most important one. And the reason I say that is, as a former energy specialist myself and with my nearly 10 years with the company, this award 
uh, rewards or recognizes those districts that sustain energy savings over the long haul and we're talking around a decade and so many times I've seen where uh, a, a these uh, clients or these school districts that take off, you know, like a like a rocket, and then somewhere along the line, uh, the interest fades and they lose momentum and they just kind of crash and burn. Uh, th this program's going for going on 10 years now, and uh, the more remarkable about that is what Gus just said. We're on our fourth superintendent. And we know that over that amount of time, priorities change at the top, and we lose that impetus that we once had. And so um, Crater Clark is definitely one of the exceptions, and I, and I do applaud that. And it's just been sustained. Um, Gus talked about you're at 26% cost avoidance. What does that mean? That means that effectively the schools are being run on 74% of the energy that they did compared to 19 or 2004. That's, that's an amazing accomplishment with all the, 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 the new things that have been added and so forth. And, uh, you know, and that's a testament to leadership all the way down to Gus. So I'm... Without any further, Gus, I'd like to present to you uh, the uh, Synergistic Chairman Sustainability Award. Uh, I'll read the citation. For conserving our nation's precious resources through the enduring implementation of the Synergistic Energy Management Program and serving as a model of energy conservation to fellow educational organizations. Thank you. While I'm at it, and while I'm here, uh, it just happens to coincide, as you know, uh, Gus is uh, leaving us, and uh, I spent the day with Todd, by the way, and uh, we did some uh, orientation training, and uh, I, I know that you're in good hands with Todd, very sharp young man, uh, but he also knows that he has big shoes to fill, you know, as Gus is leaving. Uh, as I mentioned before, Gus and I started about the same time. I was new when I was coming in and, and showing him uh, the ropes. And uh, what I remember about Gus, and I put it in my reports, was he didn't know a stranger out in the building. Okay, uh, <laughs> he, he built bridges with people uh, so quickly. Uh, of course, every, most everybody knew him, but even the people that he introduced himself to, within five minutes he had them eating out of his hand. And he had a real gift for that. And uh, th this 26% savings and $6 million didn't happen in a vacuum. It happened because this man was out in the buildings every, every day. And, of course, he had great upper administrative support from Steve and all his bosses up above. But uh, uh, tonight I'm here to recognize Gus's nine years of uh, hard work and... Uh, Got a little plaque here for him to take with him and hang on his wall. It says um, to Gus Luckert, Energy Specialist, Greater Clark County Schools, having surpassed six million dollars in energy savings, served as an energy specialist for nine years, improved the comfort for students and staff of the Greater uh, County Schools. So not only did he save money, uh, but uh, he enhanced the educational environment uh, too as well. Okay, and led a growing, uh, strong energy conservation program saving financial and natural resources for the children and community. We're going to miss him. Uh, every month he, he submits his uh, uh, energy cap data. That's the, the, the software that calculates the savings. And it's just like clockwork. It comes in. You're in the mid to high 20% range every month, which puts you in, the, in rare atmosphere. Gus, thank you. Good luck. Thank you, guys. I'll put that up in the Gus story. <laughs> thank you. 
thank you very much. Oh, yeah, he sent you with this check, too. Oh, I just got <laughs> Mark, see if you can cash that down uh, the back. Uh, <laughs> no, that was something else we did. Yeah, you, for, you forgot to sign it. Oh, that's all right. Picture that. There's no brownie. That picture needs to be on there. Yeah, really. Yeah, what is it? I get it about like 2% premium. Yeah. It's going to be more hands. Hey, just, Gus, before you leave, um, yeah, I think it was pointed out already that uh, you know we greatly appreciate the financial savings and the education, but uh, just who you are as a person and what you've brought to the table every day as an individual. I've only been here two years, but but I feel like I've known you forever, and that's just the kind of person you are. You're you're a special individual, and uh, we were lucky to have you, and we wish you the very best in your retirement. <laughs> All right, Mr. Mr. Lampus, thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Gus, good luck to you. All right, I don't know how to, I don't know if I can keep the mating that geezed up right now. Okay, we have a presentation on student achievement. I'll go ahead and uh, get it started, but I also thought that Mrs. Schellenberg could help me with this a little bit. It's just an overview of where we are from a student achievement system perspective. From a corporation pers uh, perspective moving into this year, and board, you'll hear this more in our opening day on Monday, but uh, pride is the slogan that has been adopted throughout our corporation by a team of educators uh, that have come together and you, you're very familiar with our PBIS system, Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports, and you've heard me talk about work ethic certification. You've heard me talking about career ready skills. Well, the team that came together and really it was led by Ann Schnepp and also Travis Hare uh, and all of our PBIS specialists, Linda DeFore was also part of that. Uh, they said, well, why don't we put this all into one program so we're speaking one language? And it, it came up to pride. Persistence, respectfulness, initiative, dependability, and efficiency. Those are five terms that make up pride, and there's a lot more detail that you'll hear more about down the road. But what it stands for is the fact that we believe that we want to develop people of very strong character, that strong character will trump talent, even though we want to produce kids with character and talent, character is something that will take them a long way in their life. And so if we're preparing kids to be accepted to post-secondary opportunities, at the end of that 12th grade year, we want them walking out of here being very strong of character, having a lot of pride. It needs to mean something and stand for something, and that, we believe, uh, will become a reality under this program. So that's going to be a, a strong message that we're going to send forward in our organization up and down the chain, everyone. Uh, and board, I hope that you will uh, not only fully endorse it, but support it like you have with many other initiatives. But it starts with, with you, and it carries right on down through our students. And uh, so I'm looking forward to talking more in detail. The value of strong relationships is another big theme for the year. You know, we get so caught up in all these accountability measures, and we can't afford not to be, but there has to be a better balance. And the balance is that we have to focus on having strong relationships throughout our organization. Uh, the stronger the relationship, uh, the more trust. And the more trust that's developed, the more people accomplish. And so if you think about it, uh, we had a building leadership team seminar today with almost 200 of our best educators in our corporation, and we talked about teacher relationship with students. If we want kids to be more successful in terms of whatever measure, whatever uh, assessment we give them, then they have to understand that they know that they're cared about and they're valued. And uh, that they'll work harder for people. And so that's going to be a big key message for us uh, throughout this year is the, that value of strong relationships. 
one thing that the, the teachers, I hope, will really appreciate is the fact, I promised them this, uh, no new initiatives. Uh, we have a strong system in place, and we've, we've added a lot to their plate. We don't want to add any more, but we just want to get better at what we're doing. And we have a very compliant culture. Uh, we've put a lot on their plates, and our teachers and our principals have all been very compliant. They, they will do what they've been asked to do. But, but in order to increase achievement to a higher level, we need to move to commitment. It can't just be compliance. So how do we get them to commitment? I think relationships are part of that equation. So if we can get people more committed throughout our organization, we'll have better results. Uh, planning over assessment. Uh, again, there's so much going on with assessing kids. And, and again, the balance is we have to assess kids to some level, but what we have to focus on instructionally is more planning. Uh, that's the thing that we don't take enough time to do. We need to give our teachers and, and put a focus on planning. If we re really want to engage kids, if we want to differentiate to meet their needs, it just doesn't happen by showing up into a classroom. The, the teachers need to have more time to work together and plan accordingly to make the classroom look different than it has looked. We've come a long way in that regard, but we could go a step further, and we need to help our teachers with that. And then walkthroughs, we started that last year, and it's really a way to sort of see what's going on in the classrooms. It's not trying to catch people doing something they shouldn't because our teachers are too, too good for that. That's not our concern or worry. It's how can we get better at what we do. It's a coaching philosophy and mentality. So we'll, we have a lot of walkthrough data that we've collected, and we'll share that with you at, at some time in the future here from last year, thousands of walkthroughs. But it's all about getting better. The strategic plan you're familiar with, we have to continue to monitor that and hold ourselves accountable. Uh, our schools have got to submit the state-required school improvement plans. They have to submit them to us here at the central office by the 23rd. If they, they need to come to you for your approval so they can be submitted to the state by the end of September. So those school improvement fl plans should reflect all of these initiatives that we've been speaking about in our strategic plan. Key metrics. Um, I, I can share some of those with you more in, in detail later, but that graduation rate you've heard about before, that 90%, that's a great benchmark, needs to get better. We had 92% of our students accepted to a post-secondary opportunity relative to 87% the year before, uh, so a 5% improvement. Um, our uh, AP um, classes we've talked about, our dual credits, great increase, our diplomas. We've gone from 76% core 40 in academic honors diplomas to 83%. So we've improved significantly there in terms of the percentage of, of honors diplomas. Of the 83%, 30% are academic or technical honors. That's close to where we want it to be. We, we want to go be higher. I think 33 to 35% is our next step, but we're getting there. So those are some key metrics that we really are tracking to make sure that you know we're we're moving in the right direction. So those are just a few. These essential skills, all content areas are important, but to be honest, kids are not going to excel in the classroom unless they have the essential skills. They're highly proficient in them, the reading, the writing, the math. Uh, that pride or CCR, those are those soft skills that I referred to earlier. But we need to make sure that we're investing a lot of energy across all content areas, helping our students become more proficient readers. They have to improve their comprehension skills. They've got to uh, expand their vocabulary ability. They have to have writing skills where they're going to be able to be very proficient out in the workforce. So it doesn't matter what content, our social studies teachers have to be accountable to help their kids and their classrooms become better readers of their content, the social studies content, and better writers as well. Pedagogy, this big focus is is this year, again, I mentioned earlier, relevancy. How do we make things more relevant for kids? They, they've always asked that question. Probably when we were in school, we probably asked ourselves, uh, you know, what, why do I need to learn this? Uh, today, kids ask it out loud. You know, why do I need to learn that to the teacher? So we really need to talk about how do we make everything that we're teaching them relevant? How do we relate it to them? That gradual release model is called I do, we do, you do. It's an instructional practice. I do is the teacher lecture mode. What am I as the teacher going to present today? 
it should be part of a lesson but not the whole lesson what are we going to do today what are the students going to be engaged in where they can be more a part of their own learning and then the you do piece is where we have them work independently so once they have the concept they have to prove the level to which they've learned that concept so that's something that we've introduced but need to take to a new level in our impact program I, I've shared some of the, the information and you'll know more hear more on uh, Monday but you know 6,000 kids uh, throughout the year uh, receiving some level of differentiated instruction 2800 these are just academic 2800 of those kids grew from the time they entered the program to the end and um, I believe it was um, 600 or 700 of them grew enough to grow out of their their um, intervention level so there's more information and data there but we're making a difference uh, for kids Speaking of graduate key metrics, sorry, I forgot I include this in here. Uh, no need for me to go over that in great detail. I think I've shared most of those key metrics with you earlier. Pride I've talked about already. Um, I mentioned the work ethic certificate, so that's there. And I think I'd like to have Amy then uh, finish the presentation. Um, we started the year on July 14th with all of our principals at Ivy Tech in the um, Horseshoe and Things room. It was really a great opening and had um, speakers from um, Wendy Dan Chesler to um, Dr. Schwartz from Ivy Tech really kind of pulling all of these focus areas together for us. Um, Monday we hosted the e-learning conference and we had over 220 um, teachers, not only ours but from outside, um, listen to and kind of engage in several really good sessions. We had some great speakers um, who continue to stay connected with us. and. I think through their ability to get our name out in social and uh, social media, it really kind of helps kind of lift our teachers and um, connect us with other educators. Um, today we had a great day. We had oh my gosh, probably a hundred and uh, I think 120 or more um, teachers and building principals um, next door at Utica, where we worked all day on kind of increasing the leadership from the teacher perspective, building leadership teams and really kind of getting more intentional about our work this year. And as Dr. Mellon said, really not in this, um, introducing any new initiatives, just getting better at what we do. Um, that uh, went till 3 o'clock, and then tomorrow, the next two days, we have um, Marilyn Friend presenting for um, co-teaching and collaboration, um, who's probably, probably the best presenter out there on the topic. Um, and I think we have almost 70 people um, enrolled in um, in that. Friday we welcome new teacher orientation. It's funny when we start talking about staffing early on we think we might have 25, 30 new teachers. I think we're up to 68 somewhere <laughs> around there um, just by move-ins or move-outs and, and so forth. So we're looking forward to working with them and again kind of introducing them to the Greater Clark Way. Monday we kick off um, at Charleston High School with our opening day session. Um, in the morning, uh, Dr. Mellon will be speaking again, Dr. Schwartz, I believe, and um, Wendy Dan. Wendy Dan Chester will speak, and then Todd Whitaker. Todd Whitaker well. is also. Um, and the uh, lawyer on that, my cast, what time that starts? 7.30 is uh, breakfast, and the program starts at 8 at Charlestown High in the Azumay. And then that, that afternoon, teachers are working in the building. In the evening, we have um, elementary open houses from 4 to 7, where um, parents can come in, kind of see the room, get kind of information about the schools, really help us kind of complete the registration process. Our numbers have increased in terms of our electronic registration this year, but we still want to capture as many parents as we can. So by bringing them in, and if they haven't registered, getting them in a computer lab to do that, we'll have the schools open. On Tuesday, we have corporation professional development all day at Jeff High. Um, again, the focus, four sessions that teachers will go through um, uh, around literacy, around pedagogy, um, balanced math or technology, depending on what those teachers teach, and then college and career readiness. Um, on, and then on Wednesday, the buildings will have their day to kind of look at their professional development. And again, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we have our open houses. And then Thursday, we welcome students back. Um, our ongoing professional development, and this is the support out of 
tech services in terms of our e-learning coaches, out of education services, out of elementary, secondary. We really are focusing on supporting our schools in these four um, areas, focus areas. Um, we'll be out during period zeros this year providing support. Um, we have a, a mechanism in place where um, buildings can ask for assistance through district office where we can connect them. If we have a school that's really strong in balanced math, we can connect them um, either for electronically through a virtual meetings or through on-site. Um, so we'll be supporting them through the literacy, balanced math, and college and career readiness. So, um, Brett did a good job today really talking about technology and where we're headed with, we've really not separated technology as a separate professional development topic. We want to look at literacy and we want to ask how does technology support literacy? How does technology support balanced math? <coughs> Um, we are going to be opening um, um, te or Tech Tuesdays or Teaching Tuesdays where we'll run professional development, different locations every Tuesday after school. Um, you can come on site or you'll be able to participate virtually in those. So trying to add, well, that would be at least 36 sessions that we would have through, um, through the year and really look forward to just kind of expanding our reach. Um, our goal clarity, if you've checked out our website, we have new pacing guides for every content, <laughs> all of our core content areas, and we have new standards and blank pacing guides for our related arts areas, family and consumer science, business. We'll be working through those that opening day as well. And then our focus with instructional cabinet is really data-wise. We'll do a book study um, out, out of Harvard, um, a book called Data-Wise during first quarter, during second, third, and fourth quarter, that instructional cabinet will be kind of evaluating our, our programs and the work that we've done so far. So second quarter, we'll look at impact. Using the data-wise process, has, has impact been effective? What changes or recommendations do we want to make for the 15 16 school year? During the third quarter, we'll look at the literacy framework, do the same thing. And during first, fourth quarter, look at professional development and teacher evaluation and using that same data-wise process, make recommendations for the next year. So we're busy. Mm -hmm. one, wow. one of the things too, Board, uh, data-wise is a book uh, and a concept that uh, in talking to Brett Clark, who in Evansville, they, they had adopted that process. And so I had started to look at it and then Brett was kind enough to, to sort of give me some more information and I read the book and, and it's not adding to our plate. It's just making our whole utilization of data and in, in how we, um, alter instruction as a result is sort of making it a system that sort of I think makes it more efficient for us. Um, so we look forward to that. But the other thing too that that Brett pointed out today that I thought w thought was pretty uh, innovative is that tech is inside of teach. And so when we talk about what Amy was just mentioned that and and what Brett believes in is that technology that integration. Into that's exactly. I thought that was a great um, analogy there. That tech is inside of teach, and so I thought that was very, very well done. I don't know if you have any other questions. No, but do we clap for Brett? Can we do that? Can we go after him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Um, so, are we ready? I guess for. Uh, for opening day. Absolutely, we're ready. All right. <laughs> we still have some hiring to do, by the way, but uh, oh, well. we will be there. All right. Okay. We're down to the consent agenda. We have five items tonight. I'd like to take all those together. Um, Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second. Thank you, Mr. White. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Be 6 0. Uh, Mr. Satterley, next item is gift to buildings. Would you be so kind as to take us through that? Well, absolutely. This one's a short one, but an impressive one. Um, of course, we had a couple from Parkview, Jacoby, and the town of Clarksville. Um, but the Thomas Jefferson PTA, $12,834 for iPads. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if they, it was just a donation. I don't know what they did to get it, but it's <laughs> impressive. Right. And whatever they did to get it, they need to pass it on to our other schools. <laughs> That's wonderful. So any of the parents that are out there that are involved in that, thank you. And I'll make a motion to accept. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second. Thank you, Ms. Kilkey. Questions, comments? 
All in favor? 6 0. Oh, thank you. Okay, we're down to uh, action items now, and the first one is the annual financial report. I don't believe we take any action on this tonight. I think no, it's, it's, it's just something that uh, we have to do by Indiana code. We have to advertise our annual financial report between August 1st and August 15th, and then we have to send it to the state by August 31st. So you have uh, in your board packet uh, what the annual report will look like, and it will be advertised on August 1st. Any questions for Dr. Deichel? Thank you, sir. Next, uh, next item is education logistics. Yes. Um, the administration recommends the replacement of Versatrans with education logistics, uh, normally called Edulog, for, uh, for service, license, and maintenance. Gary Green and Ken Watson have analyzed both programs, and the reason for the change is as follows. Uh, they'll waive the $30,000 initial software fee, charging us the same price currently being paid for Versatrans, waive the $3,000 cost for the advanced special needs routing component, five uh, free yearly map updates, free route transfer, easy to use for complex routing, advanced special needs module, gender specific bus aids, assign same student to same bus all day, ensure student has proper assets on vehicle and handle multi-day pickup, drop-offs, Optimi optimization features, adjust bell times, boundary changes, run route, uh, route stop adjustments, free upgrades, ability to adjust stop times manually, and on and on and on and on. <laughs> um, so anyway, they have found something better than Versatrans. We've been with Versatrans for years. Ed uh, Edgelog, we've used up north for years and years and years. I like them. Um, I had no say in this whatsoever. I want them to find it on their own because they're going to be the ones utilizing it instead of me dictating to them what they should be getting. So I think with them waiving all the fees, and we'll spend about $4,000 a year with Edgelog, which is what we're paying with Versatrans now, I think it's a, a good thing and it'll really help um, make our transportation department more efficient in the future. You know, by looking at all these special ed routes. I mean, when they were telling me the things that Edgelog has done since I've known them, if we get a special ed child and the special ed child needs oxygen and needs a bus that's air conditioned, well, as soon as the re request comes in, they'll know exactly what bus to put that child on. Right now, it's all manually done. Versatrans does not have that option. So I think this will really help speed up the transportation process and put our children on the right buses where they should be and then I won't have to worry about having three special ed buses going into the same neighborhood. <laughs> so uh, that's what we're asking you to do. All right. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. Second. Thank you, Mr. White. Any questions, comments for Dr. Deichel? Is Are we uh, tied to a certain amount of years on this contract or is it yearly contract? It's a yearly How's the support been? I know you said you headed up north, and but uh, has the support on the product been good? It's been very good. Uh, you can go out to, they're either in Montana or Wyoming. You can go out there once a year. They have a conference and uh, get it, uh, familiar with all the latest updates that they do. I think they're just more progressive than Versatrans is. That's my opinion. Okay. Andy, have you reviewed this contract? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Thank she you. blessed it. All right. All in favor? B60. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, looks like their next one is contracts for appraisal services. So, Ms. Lewis. Thank you again. And um, this evening we're recommending a, uh, approval of two contracts for appraisal services, one with Governmental Appraisal Services Incorporated and the other one with the Associated Appraisal Group Incorporated. And the purpose of these contracts would be to perform appraisals on property in the Parkwood Elementary School area. One of them, they're both vacant land areas, but one is 1.67 acres and the other is 1.24 acres. And it is with the intent of possibly doing a land exchange with a local developer um, so that we can uh, work toward meeting our goals of redesigning Parkwood Elementary School and also assist um, the developer with some property that he's trying to put together for uh, a commercial development. So um, the goal and the deadline for getting the appraisals done is August the 1st. That will give us the opportunity to bring those appraisals and um, some type of a 
contract relationship with the developer to the board for their consideration at their first meeting in August. All right. Thank you. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. White. Second. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Questions, comments? All in favor? Be 6-0. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is uh, ProCare. Melissa Granger. This is my ongoing quest for speech pathologists. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember last year, we had a speech pathologist leave, um, and we contracted with ProCare. At the end of the year, I said, thank you very much, but I have all my bases covered. Since then, I have lost two speech pathologists <laughs> and another half-time, or another one who's out on maternity leave. So uh, we are now back to saying to ProCare, yes, we would like to contract with you. The good news is the, the woman that worked for us last year is willing to come back and work for us again. So we've done all our training with her. She's, she's a good therapist. We're excited to have her back. It'll be on a contract basis. Uh, we pay $62 an hour, but no benefits at all. And we care only for a seven-hour day. Lunch is on her own. Very little ramp-up time, too, I guess. Huh? And board, one of the problems that Mrs. Schneff, she's worked very hard at it, but the, the problem is that from a salary perspective, uh, there are opportunities for them where they can go and make more dollars somewhere else relative to the school system. And so we, we're, that's something that we're going to be needing to look at in the future because we, we lost at least two people to other jobs. They accepted three. And then three. We, hired one. Okay. We, we hired three more to replace every one of those, but then two left after they got offers for much better, not better jobs. Our jobs are the best jobs, but better paying jobs. Higher paying jobs. Yeah. All right, do I have a motion? Move to approve. Thank you, Ms. Gilkey. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Questions, comments? All in favor? B60, thank you. Thank you. All right, looks like our last item is a contract with uh, e-learning e summer conference speakers. And it is late, but these were our speakers for this year, and the contract was the same that we used last year with those speakers. I have no excuse. They're, they're late. So, but they all showed up, and yeah. <laughs> we're good. And did a good job. <laughs> yeah, they did a good job. Showed up and good job. That's, we did pay them. That's plus. All right. Questions? Do I have a motion? I think we should. Thank you, Ms. Craft. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We like to count on you. <laughs> I got a second. late second. Uh, thank you. Mr. Hall, thank you. Questions, comments? All in favor? All right. B60. Thank, thank you, Amy. All right. Uh, no discussion items, reports, requests from the board. Any reports? No, thank you. Okay. And I believe we have one public comment, although for whatever reason it's not showing up on my screen here. So can you help me with the name? Miss Yorton. Miss Yorton with us tonight? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. With that, we move on to board comments. I just want to say uh, uh, thanks to Mr. Clark, the e-learning conference on Monday. Uh, I snuck away from work for a little bit and heard uh, Glenda Ritz speak and a keynote speaker, outstanding young man. Uh, those guys have it going on. Technology is the way of the future. Uh, that's a great thing we got. It puts Charleston on the map. Uh, hats off to everybody that was involved. It was a, it's a great show, and I think people will be talking about us uh, not only in Indiana but other states. There's people there from other states. So great job, Brett. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Mr. Saddley? Well, mine's uh, a little bittersweet because on the personnel report tonight was Miss Lewis' retirement. And uh, you've done a lot for us. We, I greatly personally appreciate everything you've done for us uh, for the four and a half years coming up, I guess, or four years. Anyway, um, hopefully you'll stick around and give us some guidance and support because we need it, but thank you for all you've done. So appreciate it. Ms. Kraft. Do, do, do you have time to endure what I learned at the legislative conference? Well, sure. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, from uh, Tri-County Schools, Monticello Herald. It's just an article that I thought you might want to read. Um, um, I had a 
question, and they confirmed it, about textbooks and the fact that Michigan and Kentucky pay for textbooks. I did not realize Michigan did as well. And that Ohio pays for 50% of theirs. So my question is, why doesn't Indiana pay anything? Okay, well, I asked that question. I didn't get very many answers, but anyway. And then also that background checks done in counties don't go to the state information bank. And if they did, they'd be free. So we may need to look into that. We have, we contract, and by law I believe we have to, when we go to hire an employee, they've got to go through an extended background check. And so it goes well beyond that scope. And so, but we can, when we have volunteers, things of that nature, we can do a criminal background check. But I thought we used the state police to do that, right? So, and that's a free service that we use for volunteers. But we do contract out for an extended background check, which is required by law now. Am I accurate? And this is just a note, a Nancy note. Muncie, Indiana is where Ball State is, where the charter begins and ends, hopefully. They closed eight schools and consolidated two high schools in that town where the university is. There were three people around the table who were Ball State graduates who no longer give money or have anything. They're very angry about that. That's a lot of schools, and that's a big problem for them. So to still support that university was tough. We just need to know where it's happening and what's happening. I had no idea that they were in that much decline. That's a lot. And then we talked about if property tax is not received when due, the state should pay the interest. I thought you'd like that one. I bought that one just for you. Okay. Yeah, really. Really? Well, I just thought it sounded good. Okay, that's it. I won't bore you with any more. Very good. It's always very, very interesting. Thank you, Ms. Craft. I appreciate you serving as our representative on that committee. Mr. White? No, thank you. Okay. Ms. Gilkey? I just want to say thank you for all your hard work. I know it's been a short summer, and I know we're just a few short days away from having our students back, but I think the work you're doing is going to pay off immensely, and I just want to say thank you. Well, first of all, Ms. Cook, I'd like to welcome you. We're expecting great things, and you have our full support, so congratulations, and we know you're going to be great. And, Sandy, I almost let the cat out of the bag earlier tonight, but anyway, congratulations on your retirement. We're certainly going to miss you. You've been a great asset, at least to me, for the time I've been on the board, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do now that I don't have the school attorney at beck and call, but I guess we'll work through that. Finish out. You've got to write all of our history down in a book for us. Really? That's our historian, in case you all didn't realize that. She's been here longer than anybody. I also wanted to point out in the Indiana School Boards Association, the journal, Greater Clark County Schools was highlighted. I think this is the third out of four articles, Dr. Mellon. This particular one on improving instructional practice and student engagement through a one-to-one implementation. This is huge. I mean, this goes out to every school board in the state of Indiana, and Greater Clark continues to be the focus. Again, this is the third in a series of four, and just every time I read them, I'm just very proud of being part of that. And, Dr. Mellon, you actually write rather well, so I just want to pass that on. But anyway, if you get an opportunity to read this, hopefully Erin will get that up on our website, and that will be available for public viewing. But that's all I have. Boy, I appreciate that. First of all, the opportunity that was presented to us through Michael Adamson with ISBI, I just greatly appreciate. So it does give us an opportunity to really 
you know, showcase what we're doing, and that doesn't happen without a lot of great people doing a lot of great things in our school corporation. So, uh, the, we had a realtor luncheon, and and um, I wanted to thank Mrs. Kraft and Mr. Satterley for attending that realtor luncheon. Uh, it was hosted at Jeffersonville High School. We had 37 area realtors there, and I will tell you that um, uh, Aramark did a tremendous job of uh, feeding the audience. Uh, did a great job there. Uh, organi in terms of the organization, Aaron Bohorquez, Kathy Metzger, and Renee, tremendous job of organizing the event. And uh, we had the opportunity again just to showcase all the great things that we're doing. And I, I hope that realtors left with a real positive feeling. And as, as they're um, entertaining potential clients and sort of advising them, uh, hopefully they'll advise them to move into the greater Clark County school system. So. I thought that was great. And I, one final thank you. I've got a great team. Uh, everyone that is associated with us uh, does an outstanding job. But I also want to give a shout out to our maintenance crew and our custodians because all summer long they have been really working hard. Uh, we've had safety projects undergoing at several of our schools. A lot of those projects were in part done by our, our own people. Um, our custodians is getting all those buildings clean. A lot of projects, a short summer trying to get all these projects turned over, and our principals and clerical support staff in all of our buildings, just tremendous work being done. So I just wanted to thank them. Thank you, board. All right. Thank you. Okay. With that, I guess we'll call an end to the meeting. So do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Thank you, Ms. Kraft. All in favor? All right. Good night. Thank you.